games, the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. The World Poker Tour is a series of international high-stakes poker tournaments that can turn amateur players into millionaires and make professionals into superstars. With millions at stake, it's time for these six players to live the dream. At the Mirage, it's life-changing cash and the turn of a card. Tonight on the World Poker Tour. Hi everyone, welcome to the kickoff event of season five on the World Poker Tour. It's the Mirage Poker Showdown. I'm Mike Sexton. And I'm Vince Van Patten. And Mike, we have a brand new look for the new season. Plus we have a brand new arena suitable for the winning of millions of dollars. Well Vince, last season, players fought it out for over $83 million in prize money on the World Poker Tour. And 22 of those players became WPT millionaires. That of course includes Gavin Smith, who took down the Mirage Poker Showdown title last season. All right, tonight six players are looking to follow in Gavin's footsteps, five professional players, and one amateur. You're right, Vance. We've got five Goliaths, including young guns David Williams and Devin Porter, and only one David, but this David has all the chips. He's Stan Weiss, an amateur player sitting on over two million in chips. Can this ticket broker from Tennessee take home a WPT title? We shall see. Mike, the dream of going after Miggins has not worn off because here we are, we're back at the Mirage watching the best of the game going after serious money. We've got a great final table, a beautiful new arena to play in. They're about to get underway. Let's go down to the felt. Let's shuffle up and deal. Fifth season and Mike, I have to say, you know, we have seen a lot of bad flops together, <laughs> but we're still talking and it's a good thing. No, it has been fun. The antes tonight are going to be $3,000, 15 and 30 with the blinds, and the cards are in the air. Action is going to be on Devin Porter. Here we go. This is the guy batting 1,000 on the World Poker Tour. Played two events, made two final tables. He lays down this hand, though. Yes, he does. Robert Mizraki out. Now, Harry Demetrio with Queen 10. Well, he's an aggressive English player. And yes, he's going to go up to 60,000 with this. Well, it's the minimum raise allowed. Steve quickly folding Queen Jack, and now Stan Weiss with a pair of eights in the small block. Well, we're always saying mid pairs are the toughest hands to play, especially if someone's raised in front of you. Not for Stan. He says re raise. Well, you're right, Vance. He pops it up, makes it 110,000 to go. To young David Williams. Now, David's got a little pair, a pair of fours. 80. You got to make a 90. I went, I went 60. You got to make a 90. Yeah, but I went, uh, I've, got, I've got 60. You might think about playing a small pair against one raiser, but when it's been raised and re-raised, pretty easy to get away from a small pair, I think, Vince. He's going to chuck it. And back around to Harry, who is trying to push these guys around with his queen 10, doesn't want to call off the remainder. He's a math whiz. He's getting priced in, as we say here. There's 218,000 in the pot. Going to cost him 50,000 more to call, and he is going to make the call. So we got Queen 10 versus a pair of eights on the very first pot. Well, well over a quarter million dollars in the pot already. Here comes a flop. It's ace, ace, five. Not helping the Englishman. 150. And Stan with just a pair of eights coming out to bet this $150,000. He's not scared by those two aces. Just says, Harry, if you have an ace there, too good. I'm betting into you trying to get you out of this. Well, what Harry's wondering is, does he have an ace? If I come over the top of him, could I get him to lay his hand down, whatever he's got? But Harry opts for the conservative route, folds his hand. So chalk one up to the amateur, Vince. You know, normally as a pro player, when an amateur re-raises you, you give him credit for a hand. You don't think he's making a move. Harry, indeed, gave Stan credit there and got away from his hand. Well, very solid for the businessman at the table, the ticket broker. We used to call them scalpers. And right there, <laughs> he has scalped the Englishman, Harry yep. Dimitri, in the very first spot. I'm not nervous. I'm not intimidated. You know, a friend of mine was telling me, Stan, you're as good as those guys on TV. You, you think you can play with the players. But you never really know till you do it. Well, this is going to be exciting this season on the World Poker Tour. Many more millionaires to be crowned. 
More tournaments to be played. We've got 18 tournaments on the World Poker Tour this season, 17 regular season events, and, of course, the WPT World Championship. Well, Mike, it is poker heaven out here on the World Poker Tour. Very exciting. <laughs> and you know what? After four seasons, over $200 million has been won on the World Poker Tour. This game is just getting bigger and bigger. But action's going to be on Robert Mizraki first right here at the Mirage. Robert has got King Jack this time. 85. With no hesitation, he is going to make a raise to $85,000 to go. And he's got Kojak. He's under the gun. He pops it up with a nice raise. Harry out. Steve Frederick can't play with 6-3. Over to the amateur. Stan Wise, he folds. Round to David Williams. Ace-4, no hesitation. He goes away. The only one to beat is Devin Porter, but he's got a tempting little hand. Ace-9 of hearts. And he's got the Ace-9 suited. He's got 30000 in the pot already. He's going to put 55000 more in there, so here we go. It's Ace-9 of hearts for David. King Jack for Robert. The flop comes 5-4, oh. deuce. Devin Porter has flopped a nut flush draw and a straight draw here. A lot of possibilities with that kind of hand. He has checked it. Well, Robert quickly oh, reaching for chips, and he's going to bet, Vince. And he's Rocky with nothing. He comes from that school you raise before the flop, you bet on the flop. Doesn't matter if it helps your hand or not. Now, many players would come right over the top here with Devin's hand. With the nut flush draw and a straight draw, just play power poker right away. Not worry about trying to catch the flush, just win it right now. Well, you got to think that would win, but that tactic, no, he's just going to call it. Well, this will turn the caution lights on for Robert. Oh, man, Devin has hit the flush, and Ms. Rocky hits top pair of kings. Devin has made the nut flush the best possible hand, and he checks. And Robert Mizraki checks right behind him. What a crafty check by Robert right there. Down to the river. It's a ten of clubs in a relevant card. Well, now what Devin is thinking, how much can I bet to get money out of my opponent? I've got the nuts here. There's 443,000 in the pot. How much can this man stand to call? Well, it's extraction time. And Devin <laughs> Porter puts in a couple hundred thousand, praying for a call. Pretty cool. Oh. And he does make the call. He's got top pair, Vance. He does call the 200,000. So the youngster, Devin Porter, is going to take this pot down nut with flush. a nut flush. He hits his card, and he punishes Robert Mizraki. This is the older brother, the mentor of Michael the Grinder Mizraki, who we've seen win here a couple times on the World Poker Tour. And he actually has a nickname, Who's Bad? Who's bad? Yeah, the only thing that's bad is that nickname, I think. <laughs> Exciting action from the Mirage coming right back. Stay with us here on the World Poker Tour. The title's easily way more important. I mean, the money's great, don't get me wrong. This is my third World Poker Tour final table. That's going to do it for David Williams. And it's not okay that I'm not winning. I mean, I really want to win, and I feel like today's going to be the day. I mean, money comes, money goes. You win it, you lose it. But the title is once you win it, you have it forever. Yeah, I'm the older brother that taught the grinder how to play. The brother comparison is unbelievable. It gives me more pressure. So I got to play a lot better and I got to do my thing. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the final table at the Mirage Poker Showdown. I'm here with the grinder, Robert's brother. You've got a nice little crew over here rooting him on. That's what we do. You must be proud. I'm really proud. I'm, I'm actually for, I'm happy for him that he's out there and I'm sitting in the stands. He's got a big pile of chips in front of them, huh? For now, but he can get a little crazy like me. And Robert's the type that gambles and Dave Williams the same way. They make sure they have a chance to win, you know. They don't prevent themselves from winning. He's two and a half years older and he has two and a half years more experience than I do, so I like his chances. First event of season five. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton. Right now, the lone amateur at the table is our chip leader. Can the pros come back and take him down? Vince, you know, the theme of this event is where we left off last season, how young guys did so well. Three players at this final table in their 20s. Got a good one going so far. Let's go back down to the tables on David Williams. Looking at 4-3, quickly chucks it. Devin Porter going out. Now around to Robert Mizraki. 85. He's looking down at an ace five here. And he has raised it up to 85,000 to go. Well, he's like his younger brother, the grinder. He said, play aggressive when you play. He's doing it here. And now the Englishman 
Harry Demetrio, though, with the button. He's got jack 10 of spades. His problem, though, Vince, he's only got a little over 600,000 in chips. It's going to cost him 85,000 to call here. I'll raise. He says he's going to raise it. Now forget about calling. He's coming over the top here. He loves the suit of connectors. Former clinical scientist out of England. I'm holding. Oh. He says, look, I don't have enough to make a smaller raise. I'm just going to bet them all. What a push here going all in. Stan quickly folding and back on the grinder. Or I should say the elder grinder. Robin Mizraki only has ace five off suit. He can't call. So a strong play by Harry Demetrio, the wise owl from England. Gotta think playing poker beats working with lab rats. Harry Demetrio playing perfect position on Robert Mizraki there. Coming over the top on Jack High for all your money. You know, in tournament poker, you can't choose what seat that you sit in. You were assigned your seat, but if you had your choice, you'd want to sit behind the aggressive players at the table. And in this case, David Williams and Robert Mizraki are two very aggressive style players. Harry Demetrio, I think, has got a real good seat here tonight, Vince. Well, you're right, Mike. And then you know what they say, in Hold'em Poker, it's like making love. Position is everything. <laughs> All right, enough said about that. Action's on Devin Porter. He's got King-8 offsuit, wants no part of it. Thank you. Now, Robert Mizraki right behind him is going to raise again with Queen Deuce of Clubs. He is not stopping his aggressive style of play, even though he's been stymied so far tonight. Mr. Position himself, Harry going out, Steve out, now Stan cool. Weiss. Now the amateur at the table, our major chip leader. Queen Jack of Hearts, and he has called it. Now it's on David, he's got a junkie nine deuce, goes out. Two-way action here. Queen Jack of Hearts versus Queen Deuce of Clubs. And these are the two chip leaders clashing here. Robert is Miss Rocky pushing very hard. The early hands here. Let's see if his Queen Deuce pays off. Well, the flop comes ace, king, three with two hearts. Stan Weiss has flopped oh. a royal flush draw. He won't be going anywhere. And he's checking. Going to set out the rope there. One fist. From Ms. Rocky. And look at, he's going to bet 150000 And again, we see Robert raising before the flop and betting on the flop when he hits no part of it. Amateur player Stan Weiss, you know his heart's beating fast with this huge draw. I'm surprised he just called there, Vince. He has a royal flush draw. Might want to commit some chips there, but against the second chip leader, he's taking a cautious route, wants to see a turn card. Wow, look at that. They both hit the queens. Of course, we know Stan's kicker a lot better. Three hundred. And here he comes. He's going to make a bet. Three hundred thousand to go. That's a pretty bold bet here, I think. He doesn't know Robert doesn't have top two pair or something like that here. Well, this is a problem for the big grinder, Robin is Rocky. But what's got to be puzzling to him is, why is this amateur leading out into me? I raised before the flop, I bet on the flop, and all of a sudden he's going to bet into me? If he really made a straight or had a big hand, wouldn't he check it to me and let me bet here? But he can't stand the heat, so he's getting out of the kitchen here. Right now, you got to wonder if Robert Mizraki wants to tag one of his brothers into this tournament here. The grinder, a two-time WPT champion in the audience, as well as his younger brother, Eric, who made the money in this event as well, Vince. But right now, things not going so good for Robert Mizraki. Well, you know, the Mizraki style is gonad poker. They just play very, very <laughs> fast. Now you're saying, what's going on? This guy's just throwing away money. But before you say that, you got to say, hey, he's been up against some hands. Doesn't always happen that way. On oh, our chip leader, Stan Weiss looks down at King Six off suit, has to fold it. David Williams has seven five of hearts. He lays it down. Devin out, and now 90. There he goes it. again, Robin Mizraki. Well, he's on the button in position, and he's raising again, Vance, with just Jack High. Comes in for 90,000. Action on Harry. This time has 44 midlife crises. Well, he's got the small pair, Vance. And they're always a problem when the guy raises in front of you. Now, he knows Robert's a very aggressive player. He's raising in position here. The question is, how do you play the small pair? And you could argue for all three cases here. You could argue to make the call. You could argue you could just lay the hand down if you wanted to. Or you could come over the top with a big re-raise here. Well, we know Robert Mizraki with just Jack Knight off suit is praying for a fault. But in the meantime, he sees Harry 
cutting out 90,000 in chips and counting how many more chips he's got left. Not a good sign for Robert right now. Well, what's interesting, before you say what's going on with this Ms. Rocky pledge, the aggressive player usually gets to take down these pots, but these guys are just catching hands on them. You're right about that, Vince. That's what's happened so far. It looks like Harry's in intense pain at the moment as to what to do. Oh, cool. He's well, made the call. After all the lay, Harry is going to make the call. Steve gets out of the way. And Ms. Rocky goes on suicide watch if he doesn't hit on this flop. These two guys going at it again. Robert Mizraki with a jack nine. Harry Demetrio with the two fours. And a pretty good flop for Harry right there. He swapped an open in straight draw. And of course he is the pair. Well, action is on Harry. Now what Harry's thinking here is, even if my opponent has the big over pair, I'm still gonna have a lot of outs to win this pot. I'm all in. Ooh, oh, wow. in with it. A huge bet, folks, nearly 800,000. He is just moving all in, and right now, Robert Mizraki is just posturing. No way he's going to call this bet with Jack-9. It's an impossible call to make for that much money, and he lays it down. Vince, one thing's pretty obvious. Harry's not afraid to put all his chips in the pot. He's done it twice now already. He's not worried about going out in sixth place. This guy has come to win and take this title back to England. And what an event we have here. Our first one of the fifth season. Everyone is playing fast. They're gambling here at the Mirage. Don't go away. We're coming back with more. The thing about playing these big tournaments is like the ultimate challenge. It's not just your opponents. It's the constant struggle with yourself, keeping your discipline, keeping your focus. I don't think there's a more noble art form than playing poker. Quite an honor to win a WPT title, but the most prestigious and coveted award on the World Poker Tour is being named Player of the Year. The winner of the WPT Player of the Year Award for Season 4 is Gavin Smith. It's our pleasure to present you with this Jevro watch. Gavin, you're a great champion. We appreciate you supporting the World Poker Tour. Congratulations again on this great honor. Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown, the kickoff of Season 5 here in Las Vegas where six players still remain. And our chip leader is the amateur at the table, Stan Weiss. He came to this final table as chip leader. Steve Frederick on a short stack with 260,000. All the other players have over a million. Yes, and the antes have gone up to 5,000. Blinds are going to be 25 and 50. Back down on the table. Around to Stan Weiss on the button. He lays it down. David Williams with a nine-deuce offsuit. Well, Vince, we've been talking about what an aggressive player David Williams is. You're going to get a whiff of it right here. He's raising with nine deuce out of the small blind, and he's going to take down the pot. Devin couldn't compete with his queen three. Nicely done by the young 25-year-old. Well, David Williams, very popular player out here on the tour. He's a very aggressive player, plays tough poker. He's looking to capture that WPT title tonight, Vince, I'm telling you. You can't be afraid to move all in with six high at some point. You know, you're going to have to do it. You have to be a little maniacal to win these things. You can't just sit there and wait on it forever. Whee! Gamble! You have to be a little crazy to, to win the tournament. His mom, Shirley, who's a flight attendant, flew in this morning to watch her son play. She's got to be proud. Action is on Steve Frederick. Let's see what he's got. We're looking through the WPT hole cam, brought to you by Budweiser. Looks down at ace, deuce of spades. Well, Vince, he's on a short stack. Blinds are 25 and 50,000 with a 5,000 end. You'd think he'd make a move here when you pick up ace high, but he doesn't. He lays it down yet again. Yes, he does, and now it's into Stan Weiss, and look at this. He has picked up a monster hand, a pair of kings. I raise. He's got the Cowboys. He's looking to lasso some opponents here. He quickly raises, goes up to 190,000 to go. David quickly folding, and now Devin Porter's got a little decision. He's got a pair of threes wired with the button. Well, he's got the small pair. He's in position on the button. Raise. Oh, boy. He's going to raise it, he says. 250 more. Well, he's going to raise it a quarter of a million more. I'm all in. But Robert Mizraki with a pair of queens right behind him goes all in. Wow. Devin made it 440,000 to go. And without hesitation, Robert Mizraki has moved all in with the two queens. Look at this hand, folks. The chip leader, Stan, raised it. The guy on the button re-raised it. That's Devin Porter. And Robert Mizraki has gone over the top of both of them for all his chips. 
Devin Porter not happy about making his move right now with the two threes. I can tell you that. Two big wire pairs and a little one. This is unbelievable. Now Harry with queen four. What do you think I'm going to do, David? Probably pass. Just incredible. Harry going out. And now it's, of course, back around to Stan, who's got the pair of kings. I'm all in. Oh, there goes Stan. All in. Wow. See ya. Devin Porter has to lay down his three. So this is it. They turn up the cards, but Rocky cannot believe it. Well, Vince, sometimes in this spot, you got to fear someone's got two aces when it's been re-raised and all in behind you. But Stan Weiss has got the kings. He's going with them, and wisely so. Robert Mizraki, nothing has gone right for him so far at this final table, Vince. And to make things worse, Harry Demetrio folded the queen. So one of his queens is already gone. Baby Grinder in the audience just cannot believe his brother's luck. Dave, so cold though. I mean, you have to. You have no choice. Uh, hey, all you have to do is hit a queen. The Mizraki clan on their feet over there, rooting their man in. Here's the flop. Well, the flop has come jack 9-8 of clubs. Oh. Ms. Rocky has flopped a straight flush draw. A terrific flop for him, Vince. He can win the pot with a queen, a 10, or a club right now. And look at the crowd. They're going into the grinder chance. And ironically, as big a dog as he was before the flop, Vince, he is now a favorite to win this pot. Amazing. And look at Stan Weiss. The ticket broker looks like he got the worst seats in the house. Here's the turn card. It's a jack. Well, that'll quiet the Mizraki clan down some. One card to go. Robert Mizraki needs a club, a 10, or a queen to win this pot. He's got a lot of outs. Otherwise, it's back to Grinderland for Robert Mizraki. Vince, he came to this final table with over two million in chips in great shape. Thought he was going to win this tournament. He could go out in sixth place if he doesn't get some help right here. Well, Stan can't even look, Vance. He's walked away from the table. He doesn't even want to see the river card. Will the two kings stand up for the amateur? Yes, they do. A jack comes off. Both players make a full house, but jack's full of kings. They're going to take it down. Well, Robert going over to apologize to the family, but Vance, like a rock going to the bottom of the ocean, Robert is Rocky out in sixth place. And he is incredibly stunned. The very aggressive. Exciting player, Robin Mizrock. He's going to pick up $129,000. He is our sixth place finisher. Now, Vince, I got to tell you, there's a play that some pros might question. When a tight player has raised it, another guy's come over the top of him. You know, is that the time to make the move with the two queens there when it's been raised and re-raised? Unfortunately for Robert, it wasn't. He wanted to win a WPT title like his brother has done. There you see Gavin Smith consoling him now. Stay tuned, we're coming back with more exciting action. Five players remain here on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Robin Mizraki is our sixth place finisher. Nothing went right for him tonight. Well, right now, Vince, it's a one-man band at this final table. The lone amateur, the oldest player at the table, Stan Weiss, in command here. He's got $4.3 million worth of chips. He is doing it to him right now. Got this tournament through a $60 satellite, a businessman out of Nashville, Tennessee. And the dream is very much alive right now for Stan Weiss. It is going to be on Stan, the man, well, to act first. He's got so many chips in front of him. Vince, he can hardly get his cards through for us to have a look at him. And <laughs> a deuce, he opts to lay him down here. David Williams with Dolly Parton, 9 to 5, goes away as well. And well. Devin Porter has got a wired pair of fives, though. I remember the last time he had a small pair of the two threes, he opted to come over the top of Stan. That didn't work out well for him. Let's see what he's going to do with the two fives here. 190. He has made it 190,000 to go. Puts in a nice, hefty little bet there. Harry Demetrio. And look at this. Harry's picked up a big hand. He's got big, slick ace king. How much is left? Five, six. You'd think he'd re-raise here with the ace king. Six. Let me see. Okay, I'm all in. And he is indeed. He's going all in. Over the top. Steve Frederick with 10-4 has to go out. Back on the little pair of Devin Porter. Well, Devin faced with a tough decision here. You just saw him say wow to himself. Well, it's an additional $745,000 to make this kind of call. At best, Devin knows he's in what we call a race situation where your opponent has two overcards that aren't paired against your under pair. At worst, he's up against an overpair in which he would be completely dominated. 
Well, you're right. When you have one of these lower pairs or mid pairs, it's better to go all in yourself. You can win the pot right there. But this, to call it off, so to speak, not usually a good play. First, you got to hope he's got two over cards. Then you got to hope to win the race. And when it's for all your chips, it's a tough problem. And he lays him down, Vince. Yes, he does. He opts to wait for a better spot with the two fives. So the over-the-top all-in bet working to perfection for Harry Dimitrio so far at this final table. Uh, people keep teasing me because I say you have to be physically and mentally very tough for this. I'm the wrong side of 40, but these young guys, they haven't got a hope against me. They may be technically superior, but they haven't got the mental toughness that I have. The former clinical scientist, consultant. Well, like Gary Player, Harry Demetrio believes in staying fit, Vince. He works out all the time, plays a lot of soccer. He thinks it helps your performance. Indeed, it's helped him get to yet another final table. We saw him before in the World Poker Tour in the event that the Unabomber, Phil Locke, won the WPT Invitational a couple years ago. Harry is back and plans on coming back more and more, he told me, Vince. But right now, Stan Weiss is still a chip leader with about 4.4. And Steve Frederick, boy, he is real short stacked, 160,000 left. Well, Vince, he's going to have to play a hand soon, like it or not. Action is going to be on Devin Porter, 22-year-old from Utah. He's got 9-3, can't play it. Now Harry looking down at 6-3 offsuit. And he's going to give it up. Well, there you go. Steve Frederick picks up big slick, and he moves all in with it. Yeah, he picked up a hand finally. Stan Weiss folds. And now it's David Williams, who's got Dolly Parton, 9-5. to five, But he's already got $55,000 in the pot here. It's an automatic one either way, but... Well, Vince, he's getting two and a half to one odds on his money, and he can well afford to make this call. I believe David's going to call with us, hand, even though it looks like he has absolutely nothing. I have nothing. That's an insta call, then. I have to. It's 105, right? Steve Frederick with just not enough ammunition to push his opponent away, so he might get action on this hand. David is making it. He's calculated it, I think, properly here. And the truth is, David's very happy with that hand. He's got two live cards. He's up against Big Slick, Ace King. Well, here we go. We've got Big Slick versus Dolly Parton. Good luck, buddy. Either way. Let's see if David Williams can get lucky here and knock Steve Frederick out of this tournament. Will the Ace King hold up? Well, he's got a nice shot to double up. Five cards to come. Let's take a look at the first three. Well, the flop comes Ace, seven, six. Great flop for Steve Frederick right now. He's over a four to one favorite to win the pot from here. David Williams needing an eight. That would give him a gut shot straight. Never easy. Of course, he could hit two runners, but right now, Steve Frederick in great shape to double up. Well, if there's any justice to be playing a patient, solid game, his hand would hold up. Let's take a look at the turn. Ooh. Well, a nine comes up, so that gives more outs to David Williams. He can now win the pot with a nine, an eight, or a five. A nine, an eight, or a five will eliminate Steve Frederick from this tournament. Steve Frederick finally picking up his hand, but now he's got a sweat out the river card. Well, he's still about a four to one favorite to win this pot, so he's in good shape. Here we go with the river. Oh, it's oh. a five. Two runners in a row to take Steve Frederick out of this tournament. So Dolly Parton is going to outdo Big Slick here, and that's going to do it for Steve Frederick. Oh, that is just so ugly. So Steve Frederick played very patient. Oh, just waited too long to make his move, in my view. When you wait that long, you know you're going to get action. You know you're going to get played with, and you can get outdrawn. That's what happened to him there. Oh, come on. It's a bad beat. Just say it. Bad beat. Beat. Okay. Bad beat, but it's not so bad for him. He got in this turn by winning a $1,000 satellite. He takes home over 166000 for his efforts this week. And you think back, you know, 384 players started this event, all putting up 10 grand down to these four. Winner's going to take home $1.3 million. Well, of these four players, we've seen three of these guys at WPT final tables before, but they're not the ones that have the chip lead. That honor goes to Stan Weiss, the only amateur at the table, and he has a dominating chip lead, Vince. Oh, Can he stave off these pros? It is just a dream come true for the ticket broker from Nashville, Tennessee, with all the chips. Let's go back down to the money pit and take a look on Stan Weiss. Got King 5 in his hand, off suit. Blonde still at 50 and 100,000. He goes out. 
Right, around to David Williams. He looks down at Cole 44s. He's on the button in position, and he is going to raise it. Comes in for 150,000. Yeah, Devin quickly folding, and now Harry, our Englishman, looks down at ace eight of hearts. Well, a very tempting hand, Vance. Ace eight suited. He's fully aware that David Williams could raise on any two cards in position as he is now. He's thinking he might have the best hand. Not cool. He's going to call off another 100,000. So Harry opts to make the call here rather than re-raise. Wants to see a flop before he commits all his chips. And here it comes. Ace, king, six. Harry Demetrio has flopped top pair. He has flopped the two aces. He now has the best hand. Action's on, Harry. David Williams just eyeballing him. His little pair of four is not looking very attractive now. 250. Ooh. Well, Harry leads out and bets 250,000. And it's just going to blow David Williams right out of the pot. That's one of those times when you say 250, but I didn't really mean 250. I was thinking check, sir. <laughs> well, Harry Demetrio staying fit by stacking up chips, Vet. <laughs> yeah. He's looking to become another Englishman to take a WPT trophy back home with him. The Englishman have fared very well out here on the World Poker Tour. Action's going to be on David Williams. Throws it away. Devin Porter on the button. He looks down at a pair of sixes. He's going all in with him, Vince. Yep. He's got 600,000 left, and he's sailed into the center. That's the way to play those little pairs. And now Harry Demetrio. Two, four, about, about six, roughly. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, he's got one of those hands yeah. you like to play, pseudo connectors, yeah. but you can't play them when the guy moves oh, all in in front of you, Vince. Too much for me. But in the meantime, because of the WPT hole cam brought to you by Budweiser, we see Stan cool. Weiss has got ace queen. He's called him, Vince. Oh, He's yes, made the yes. call. So the classic race situation, the two over cards versus the under pair. And 22-year-old Devin Porter's tournament life on the line right here. He must win this pot to stay alive. Well, Devin's got the pair of sixes up against ace queen, the Mike Tyson hand. It looks strong, but it usually gets beat. <laughs> Will this be the demise of Devin Porter? Stay tuned. We're coming right back with the conclusion on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. Pair of sixes for Devin Porter up against ace queen. We're going to see a flop. Devin Porter's life on the line. Here comes a flop. Well, so far, so good for Devin. It comes Jack 4-3. The two sixes are still out front. Devin squirming there. Come on, Dealer. Come on. Well, look at Devin. He can't oh, even look. I don't blame him. He just can't take it, but now he's peeking. <laughs> he just can't help but look, man. He's going to take his medicine like a man. He's on if the, indeed an ace or a queen comes off of there. He's on the torture rack. Here comes 4th Street. He dodges another one. Well, the nine of clubs comes off. Don't you be saying king of diamonds. The ten of diamonds. I'm no, like don't be saying that. Stan Weiss must catch an ace or a queen on the river to knock Devin Porter out of this tournament. It's the sweat card right now for Devin. Can he do it? Yes. Devin Porter, after making what we thought was a questionable re-raise over Stan a minute ago with two threes, makes the all-in bet here with the two sixes, and they stand up. He's a phenomenal player. Don't forget, he's only played two WPT events, and he's made both final tables. Well, it looks to me like he should be rescheduling his life and play a few more WPT events, Vince. He does very well out here. You're right. Get the heck out of Salt Lake City. Come out on the World Poker Tour. Join us. I've played in two World Poker Tour events. Made the final table in both of them. Highlight for this tournament was knocked for live out day two. When I knocked him out, I was just happy to win the pot. A couple minutes after it, I realized, wow, I just knocked Phil Ivy out. <laughs> what a lively game we have here at the Mirage so far from Las Vegas. The kickoff of the fifth season here on the World Poker Tour. Four-handed amateur at the table. Stan Weiss still out in front with about $4 million. Can Stan hold out and win this event? Action's going to be on him. Well, that was the first big hit he took at this final table. Let's see if it phases him. Throws away eight deuce, and now David Williams with the button. He's got San Francisco 49 in his hand. And he's going to stay aggressive, raising on the button with a 9-4. Makes it 150,000 to go. Devin Porter goes out. Now the only one to beat is Harry. He's got a little pair of threes here. Wow, another tough hand in terms of what to do. And you see 
the stress that Harry Demetrio is under here, what would you do with two threes here? Do you come over the top of your opponent? Do you just call here? Could you possibly get away from him before the flop? Harry picking up cards like a little flunky. Another wired pair of threes. Well, we know the Costa Rican players would come over the top for all their chips, Vince. That's what they're known for. Look at but this. Harry opts to just call here. Wants to see a flop first before he commits his chips. Harry with the two threes. David with the 9-4. This rivalry continues. Here's the first three. It's an ace-9-5. Harry quickly checks it. David, of course, hitting the pair of nines. But he checks them, Vince. Yep. Doesn't want to get check raised here. We'd get run off the pot. Turn card comes up. A jack of clubs. That four flushes David, as well as his pair of nines. Well, again, Harry checks. And now David's coming out. He's going to make a little feeler bet right here. Looks like he's betting 100,000, Vince. Not a big bet into a pot that's got 345,000 in it. And the Englishman says no moss. It's enough to get the job done. So David Williams taking it down there. Now there's a case, Vince, that had Harry come over the top for a large rage before the flop, he would have won that pot rather than lost it. But, you know, you can't really blame the guy for just taking a flop there, hoping to flop a set and bust David Williams. It is just great to win with 4-9. <laughs> you know, you get more joy that comes out of winning with a junk hand than any pair of kings or sets that you can ever have. Hey, you're right about that, Vance. The feeling inside <laughs> is just one of joy when you win with a Garfunkel. Okay, action back down on Stan Weiss. He has 6-4 this time. Cannot compete, goes out. David Williams looks down at a pair of nines. Strong hand on the button here. 99, the Gretzky hand, and he's going up for a pop. Yeah, makes it 150,000 to go again. Devin abandoned ship. And the one to beat is Harry from England, and he's got a pair of jacks wired. What a hand to pick up in the big blind. He has been a card rack tonight. Well, he is in great shape here, Vince. Molly. And he's going over the top all in here. He has come over the top all in on David Williams. David pops out of his seat. Very interested. Vince, I think it's going to be very tough for him to get away from these two nines. The yeah. only way he's a substantial underdog here is if his opponent has specifically an over pair. Unfortunately, that's the case, but you don't know it when you're sitting at the table. I like this move by Harry. You're raising a guy so you can just take down the pot right now. You don't really want to call in case the guy has an ace something. A big decision for David Williams right here. He has a few more chips than Harry Demetrio, so he won't get broke if he makes this call and loses this pot, but he will be crippled. I'll call. Oh, he's made the call. Well, I don't blame him, Vance. I would have made the call, too. He's hoping his opponent had two over cards or an under pair. That's not the case. Oh, and look at that look on David. Absolutely sickening. You are sick when you see you're in a dominated position. Harry Demetrio in great shape to double up right here. Pair over pair. Doesn't mean you're going to win the pot, though. It is not over. Now, they both have about the same amount of chips. I think David has a couple hundred thousand more. Yeah, you're right, Vince. David will not be eliminated. He'll still have a few hundred thousand if he loses this pot. Let's take a look at the first three. It's like slow torture, isn't it? You know. <laughs> well, Harry's in a dominating position, and he's still tortured. He wants to get the flop out there and get this over with. Well, it's come King 10-7 with two hearts. Very solid flop if you're Harry. David Williams in dire straits now. Going to have to catch a nine or two runners to make it straight. David looking doomed here. Here comes 4th Street. Well, a queen comes up. That means David Williams no longer wants a nine because that would give his opponent a straight. What he's got to have now to win this pot, ironically, is a jack. That'll give him a king eye straight. So he is switching from rooting for his nine to rooting for Harry's jack. There's two left in the deck. Will one hit right here? Let's take a look. Nope, the four spade comes off. So David Williams sits back down and takes a big hit right there from Harry Demetriou. A huge pot there, over two and a half million dollars in that pot. We are starting out season five with a great one. Stay tuned, we're coming back in just a moment. Generally speaking, there's a saying, and some players believe it firmly, 
that if you're going to come into a pot, you should raise it regardless of the cards you're holding. David looks at a 6-3 offsuit. He's betting 74000 You know, you should raise with a 6-8, for example, just like you had two aces. David's bet 60000 here. I would say if you're going to come into the pot, you should raise it for about three times the size of the big blind, regardless of what you're holding. If you limp every single time, opponents are going to understand that you're just trying to see a cheap flop. By raising every time, I think you keep your opponents a little bit more on balance. So remember, if you're going to come into a pot, raise it up. For more great poker tips, log on to worldpokertour.com. We think the Mirage and the WPT is a great marriage. And we're happy to be hosting this uh, this event for the third time. PT Championship, and he's done it! Our guests plan their vacations around it, come to see some of the big boys play, and see what High Stakes is all about. When the Mirage opened years ago, it was the first big poker room in Las Vegas, and we want to reestablish our right to that position as being the venue for poker in Las Vegas. He's done it! Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown, where four players remain right now. Well, one of these four players is going to walk away with $1.3 million in cash tonight. The lone amateur at the table, Stan Weiss, got over $4.1 million in chips. In second place is Harry Demetrio, who just doubled up through David Williams. And in fourth place right now, David Williams on the short stack with $320,000. Devin quickly folding his hand, and now Harry Demetrio with the button. He's got six nine of spades. Well, he's looking at the chip leader and the short stack and the two blinds. And he's going to lay down the 6-9. And Stan Weiss with King 3 says all in. Well, he's going to push like, around David. I like this play by Stan. Vince, I'll tell you, he knows the King High is a favorite over a random hand. And look at this. David Williams gambling with a 7 high here. He's got the 7-6. You wonder if he's steaming from the last pot. Well, obviously, he is steaming like a Chinese laundromat. Just chucking in the additional $270,000 to gamble here a little bit. Well, I don't mind the guy moving all in if he acts first with a 7 high. But I'm not crazy about this call, but let's see if it works out. He's in about as good a shape as he could be in. Less than a 3-2 to two underdog here. Can he get lucky and stay alive in this tournament? Look at this. Oh, the nuts. David Williams has flopped the nuts. The seven high straight. Oh, that is just sick right there. Well, it's not over yet. Stan could hit two runners and make a full house here. Is it ever? Well, Stan, even though it's not over, trying to pay him off, man. Not out of the, not out of the water yet. I don't, that. I don't want to get greedy. I want to wait and make sure. And that's going to do it. A 10 of clubs comes off on a turn. Three, ten, David Williams see. has doubled up. Oh, boy. Can you spell double up? Nicely done, David Williams. And look at the Williams fans. Mom Shirley getting excited. Three, Evelyn Ng, his good friend. Could this be the comeback of the night? David Williams couldn't have picked a more perfect time to call that bet with a 7-6. That shows me David Williams doesn't care about fourth place or third place, Vince. He is looking to get a hold of some chips and get back in the hunt where he can win this thing. I'm standing here with Shirley, David Williams' mom, and as I understand, you literally just got off a flight to make it here for the final table. I did. I barely made it. Well, we're glad you made it here. Me too! <laughs> and so this is your son's third WPT final table. What's going on through your mind right now? Well, I'm thinking he got a second, he got a fourth. It's time for a first! Well, best first. of luck to him. Thank you very much. David's won all his big pots with a 9-5, a 9-4, and a 7-6. Ironic game in this game of poker. Back to the table on Stan Weiss. Chip leader still with about $3.7 million. Throws away Jack 6. Over to David Williams now. He looks down at the 7-4. He scraps it. Opportunity for Devin Porter, perhaps. He's got 8-7 offsuit. All in. And he says all, all in. in. He's got a half million left, and he set it right in the center of the pot. Wow, Devin trying to steal here. Right like behind him, Harry's got a big hand. He's got ace, ten of hearts. Count, please. Well, he wants to know how much it is. It's about a half a million dollar bet here. If Harry called and lost this pot, he's still going to have over two million in chips. I can't see Harry laying this down at all. The young man from Salt Lake City saying a prayer, cool. saying go away, but no, he's made the call. Yep, he can well afford to make this call, and he's going to love it. He has the best hand. Harry's a two-to-one favorite to win this pot and knock the youngster out of this tournament. We just saw David Williams on the previous hand. He was on a short stack. He won as the underdog. Can Devin Porter do the same thing? 
Yeah. yeah. Got to admire his move. He made the move there. Just ran up against the hand. Over a million dollars in this pot. Harry Demetrio with the ace 10. Devin Porter with the ace 7. He needs some help. Trying to get lucky. Otherwise, he's back to Mormon country. 0-8 oh, right in the door. Oh. Devin has hit a pair eights on a flop. He's now the leader. And look at Devin's dad pumping his fist. Man. He went from a 2-1 to one underdog to a 2-1 to one favorite. Just as quick as they spread that flop. Oh, man, the short stack with a little destiny work right there. Well, Harry looking for an ace or a 10. Two runners to make a flush or two runners to make a straight. Deuce! A deuce comes off. That is not the card Harry wanted to see. He now must catch an ace or a 10 to knock Devin Porter out of this tournament. A young 22-year-old with an opportunity to double up. All he's got to do is dodge the river. Deuce! It's and a he queen. did it. So the full house by Devin Porter is going to win this pot. And he has doubled up. Vince, these short stacks just will not die off here. Nobody wants to go home. And right now, this game is turning into little short stacks that could. Now, Vince, yes, Devin Porter got lucky to double up and win that pot and stay alive in this tournament. But you can never fault the player who moves all in first, who initiates the action, as Devin Porter did there. The Mirage Poker Showdown continues after this. Welcome back to Las Vegas in the final table at the Mirage Poker Showdown. I'm Sabina Gadecki, and here's a recap of the action so far. In Las Vegas, heartbreak came quick for a famous name, Robert Mizraki, as his two million in chips got grinded away to nothing. Then, thanks to a well-timed gamble, David Williams bounced out short stack Steve Frederick in fifth place. Lone amateur Stan Weiss sits atop a mountain of chips, but a seasoned pro, a young gun, and a poker phenom are all looking to kick Cinderella out of the ball and kick off their WPT season with a $1.3 million payday. One of these four players is going to walk away with $1.3 million in cash tonight and a coveted WPT title. And Who's it going to be? And the antes have gone up to $10,000. Blinds are going to be forty and 80000 Action's going to be on the lone amateur at the table. Stan Weiss, our chip leader from Nashville, Tennessee. And break out the grits, Vince. He's picked up two kings again. The last time he had this hand, he won a monster pot over Robert Mizraki and busted him out of this tournament. Yes, yeah, sir. And he says raise, of course. It looks like he's going up to 200,000. David looks at Queen 10 and folds. Devin Porter out and Harry Demetrio. The big blonde has 7-5 offsuit. Not anything special, of course. What Harry's doing is calculating the pot odds. He sees there's 360,000 in the pot right now. Going to cost him 120,000 more to call, meaning he's getting 3-1 to one pot odds, as we say. He is hoping well, to hit Lucky on the flop if he should get in. Well, he's going up against the chip leader here. Do you want to put another 120000 in here for the 7-5 offsuit? That's the question. Oh, cool. Well, he's going to do it, Vance. Oh, cool. He thinks he's getting proper pot eyes to make this call. He's going to gamble here with the 7-5. Uh, to the delight of Stan Weiss, wired pair of kings, the double rulers. Let's see what happens. 9-8 a deuce. Harry has flopped a gut shot straight draw, but obviously stands two kings well out front. Action's got to be on Harry first. 400,000. Oh, man, he's betting 400 grand. Well, he's trying to pick the pot up right here, Vance. I'm all in. Stan obviously not going for it. He's going all in right here. The sledgehammer comes over the top. He's saying, if you can beat this hand, good luck to you, my friend. In Nashville, we play the Cowboys. It would take all Harry's chips to play this pot. Can't imagine he would do it with a gut shot straight draw. But Vince, I don't really fault him for making that bet on the flop. I sort of like it. If his opponent had ace-king, it would be very difficult for him to make a call there with that flop. You know, he could have king-queen or ace-king or even two sixes. Chances are he'd throw that hand away. Well, what's interesting is Harry's taking a lot of time on something you know he's got to go away with. Just got the inside straight draw. Well, I mean, just saving face here a little bit, I think. Well, the crowd's rooting him on. But believe me, if they were sitting there with a gut shot straight throw, it would have long been gone. And there goes Harry. He does lay it down. 
And look at the look on Stan. So self-satisfied. The ticket broker looks like he sold off a couple counterfeits there and gets paid off for him. Well, I'll tell you, he loves those Cowboys, Vance, no doubt about it. He's won a couple big pots with them. I've been out playing these guys for the most part. The advantage that I think I have is they may not think that I know what's going on. I've gotten lucky, you know, some hands, but you have to get lucky. Just shows you that amateurs can win satellites to get in these tournaments. They can hold their own when they get there. And who knows? They could capture over a million bucks and a WPT title could happen tonight. And it's going to be once again on Stan the Man. This time Harris. looking down at ace three offsuit. And he's got the ace high. He's the chip leader. It's a four-handed game, and he's going to raise it. Makes it 200000 to go. Once again, putting pressure on David out. Devin out. Well, it worked. David folded a better hand. He folded ace nine. Only one to beat now is Harry. He's got king eight offsuit. Well, we're back in the same scenario, Vince, where it's going to cost him 120000 to call this raise. You know he doesn't like his hand. He's getting three to one odds on his money. His problem is he's getting whittled down in chips, and he can't keep making these hundred and some thousand dollar calls. Cool. Well, you tell Harry that because he just did it again. Makes this call, wants to see a flop. I'm a little surprised at this, Vince. Normally you give an amateur credit for having a hand when he raises, yet Harry's continuing to gamble with him. He's going to just try to double up and take him down a notch. We got ace three versus king eight. Nice little rivalry between these two. Well, the flop comes jack, eight, six, all spades. Now, Harry is checking to see if he's got a spade to go with his pair of eights. He doesn't. He does have the best hand with two eights, and he checks. Yes, he does. Now, Stan has the super spade. He has the ace of spades, and he's going to bet. And I like this bet by Stan here. He's got the nut flush draw. He's going to put pressure on his opponent. He bets 300000 Right back in the face of the Englishman. Well, Harry Demetrio now faced with a real problem, folks. He's got second pair, yes. He doesn't have a flush draw. He could be beat now. Certainly his opponent could be drawing to a hand to beat him, and that's the case. Can Harry afford to jeopardize 300000 here? Or will he pull the trigger and just go for all of it? Harry checking out his stack, though. Still interested in his proposition. What would you do here with middle pair and no flush draw if you were Harry? Come on, Cole. Oh. Wow. Harry Demetrio is making the call here. This is a bull call, folks. Cost you 300000 to make this call, and you've got second pair and no flush draw when there's three trumps on the board. Well, he's made a good read here on Stan. He's out in front right now. Danger lurking. Let's see the turn. He's going to see if a spade comes off before he gets any more money in the pot. And the five of clubs comes off. Harry quickly checking here. Harry getting a feel here, as we say, and Stan's as if he has the best it. hand or not. And Stan checks right behind him. Wants to draw for this flush for free. Stan looking for an ace or a spade. Well, the ten of clubs comes off. Another overcard. Stan does not catch his flush. We know Harry has the best hand at this point. Well, Harry is going to check the two eights. Stan checks right behind him. Harry Demetrio is going to love this. His two eights are going to win this pot. Oh, and look at this. Look by Stan. Disgusted, saying, how did you make that call on me, sir? <laughs> he looks away, Vance. Doesn't even look at his opponent at all here. And as you said, disgustingly, mucks his hand there. First time we've seen some emotion out of this amateur. It's the amateur chiding the professional. You see everything here in the World Poker Tour. So a tough call to make right there by Harry Demetrio. Yet yeah, he made it, Vince. Action's going to be on David here. Looks down at six deuce. Can't play it. And now Devin Porter with seven deuce. He gets out of the way. This is becoming a two-man game here, Vince. Seems like Harry and Stan are playing every pot against each other. And look at Harry. Just can't get rid of all the chips in front of him. Finally... Pushed them away to take a peek at his hand. Oh, wow. He has got the weapons of mass destruction. The pair of aces, the mother of all poker hands. I've got all these chips here. Hold on a second. Oh, and I just love this. Oh. Now he's Let acting like Sorry. he's preoccupied with chips. Oh. He knows he's got this monster. Oh, Vance, he's trying out for the English theater Sorry, right here, looks like. He's so excited, thinking about how he's going to play, but he's acting like he's dealing with the chips. I'm not. They're just my hands can't hold all these chips. 
Well, remember this about tails, we say. When a guy looks weak, usually he's strong. When he's trying to look strong, usually he's weak. Oh, now he's look at this. Harry looking back at his hand again. Like it was uneventful oh, the first time, so he has to pick it up again. And now here comes the raise. He says, now I am going to raise it. What a fluff and puff show you're witnessing here. Well, 180,000. He raised it 100,000 here. Not a giant raise by any means. Let's see if that's going to suck Stan into this. He's got king five of clubs. I raise. He is going to re-raise it, Vance. Five, eight. Five, eight. Well, you got to wonder if this is a steam raise on his part. Not happy that he just gave his friend some big bucks in that last pot. Going to try to get some of them back here, Vince. Well, the chip leader in a potential mess right now. He has bumped it up an additional 400,000. And look at Harry. Trying to look like he doesn't really know what to do here or how to play this hand. His wonderful acting job has worked to perfection. I'm all in. <laughs> there we go. Now Harry is going to go all in here. A quick call. Wow. I can't believe this call. It's $1.7 million more for him to make this call. How can you do it with a king five? You can't blame him for taking a shot at the bluff, but the re-raise is so huge, you got to slow down and think, hey, maybe I've been outplayed here. I can understand him putting in the 580000 but how can you call an all-in re-raise here for several million dollars with just a king five? What's a mind-boggling play here by Stan Weiss. Well, Vince, he didn't take any time no. at all. He just said, I call. Just wasn't paying any attention to how the betting was going, what kind of cards he has. He's just trying to get back at Harry, it looks like. Well, five cards to come. The money is all in for Harry. Well, Harry conducting the orchestra, the Harry Orchestra. Well, he's outplayed his amateur friend right now. He's got the aces versus king five and a shot at becoming our new chip leader. Here comes the flop. Well, it's come five, three deuce with one club. Danger, Will Robinson. Well, Vince, it's never easy with two <laughs> aces, even though Harry's still about a four to one favorite to win this pot from here. I guarantee you, he doesn't like that flop because he knows a king or a five will give his opponent the lead here. Well, potential suckouts for Stan the man. Well, the audience holding their breath. Let's see the turn. Well, the eight of diamonds comes off. Now this gives Harry Demetrio the nut flush in diamonds, meaning the king of diamonds will not help Stan Weiss now. He's got to catch a king or a five. That's not a diamond. Harry would love to slap down the amateur player, Stan Weiss. A huge pot over four and a half million dollars. Here comes the river. Well, it's the eight of clubs. The two aces are going to stand up. He's made aces and eights, dead man's hand, and it doesn't kill Stan Weiss, but it wounds him. Fresh from Piccadilly Circus, the performance of the night by Harry Demetrio makes him the chip leader. Who said these Englishmen got no emotion? What a time to get your pair of aces, four-handed. You got a man on tilt, giving you his money. That's beautiful. Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown out of Las Vegas, Nevada, where four players remain in the first event of the fifth season on the World Poker Tour. What a turnaround we just witnessed. Harry Demetrio doubling up through our former chip leader, Stan Weiss. He's now the new king on the block. He's got four and a half million in chips. And Vince, there were some lessons to be learned in that last pot. When your opponent re-raises you, always take your time before you put your money in the pot. Action's going to be on our chip leader, Harry Demetrio. He's got the Motown hand, Jackson Fives. Well, he's certainly got Mo on his side, but he lays this hand down. And now into Stan Weiss. He looks down at Queen Nine here, trying to catch his breath here. He lays it down on the button. And now David Williams in the small blind with just a Jack Six. Let's see how he plays this. 40-80. Well, he may be on the short stack here, Vince. But he continues to play the small blind very strongly. We're seeing it here. He's raising here with a jack six offsuit. Makes it 230,000 to go. Well, he's going to be a thief. He's going to try to pickpocket Devin. But Devin's got king three of hearts. Is he going to get stubborn? Well, Vince, every time tonight, David's been in a small blind. He's raised in this situation and picked up the pot. Sometime you got to draw your sword in the sand. Devin's going to look him up this time. He makes the call for 150,000 more. Yeah, he puts his chips in. So it's jack six for David, king three for Devin. Here comes a flop, and it's come king jack ten. 
David Williams has flopped second pair. He's moving all in. But oh, Devin man. Porter has top pair here. Potential war here. My call. And he's going to make the call. He said, look, I called before the flop. I've made top pair. I'm going with it. Uh, he's made the correct call. David Williams up against it. All in one more time at this final table, Vance. Well, right now, Devin Porter in great shape. About a four to one favorite here to knock David Williams out of this tournament. Yes. His fan base going nuts in the stands. He has put David Williams on the brink of extinction. He's going to have to get very lucky now to stay alive in this tournament. Needs a jack or a six at this moment. The millionaire's dream slowly slipping away for David Williams. Fourth place will collect 221,000 compared to the 1.3. Let's see the turn card. Deuce! What a six! David Williams has two pair and has taken the lead here, but notice it's a hard bench. Devin Porter has a hard draw now. Wow. Devin Porter can now win this spot with a king, a 10, a three, or a heart. That was just a ridiculous card there. Well, that's the reason you don't see David Williams jumping up and down, Vance, because there's still a lot of cards that the opponent can catch to win this spot. Well, like any smart gambler, don't get too excited till it's all over. Coming down the river. three kings and that's going to do it for David Williams it wasn't David's night tonight I know he's going to be disappointed with this fourth place finish but in truth if you look back on his cards he literally held no hands at all this evening at this final table well you're right about that just played with great creativity and guts David Williams our fourth place finisher picking up two hundred twenty one thousand dollars so we are down to three players. The Mirage Poker Showdown. Harry Demetrio in command here. And Stan Weiss, would you believe it, is now our short stack with 1.25 million. Well, what few people would believe, Vance, is that both Robert Mizraki and David Williams, two top players, are out of this final table. It's come down to these three guys. All right, back to the money pit on Devin Porter. With the button, he's got queen eight off suit. And he's going to lay it down. Now Harry in the small blind's got 10 deuce of diamonds. Uh, he has called it and Stan with just Motown Jackson fives says, let's see the flop. Now finally, a peaceful pre-flop action between these two guys. King five deuce. Harry has flopped bottom pair. He checks it. Stan has flopped middle pair here. And he's got the pair of fives, of course. 200. And he's going to bet 200,000. Nice bet by Stan here. But Harry, without a blink of the eye here. Well, Harry quickly calls him with bottom pair. Doesn't quite believe Stan. Stan out in front with a pair of fives up against the deuces. Let's see 4th Street. Oh! Mm. Harry Demetrio has made three deuces. Well, he has nailed three of a kind. And look at this. He's checked it. And Stan. I'm all, I'm all in. With a catastrophic all-in bet. Well, obviously, Harry quickly called him with the three deuces. Stan White's very unlucky on the turn right there. Look at the expression on his face. He thought his opponent had a draw. He didn't put him on three deuces here. He has a two-outer, as we say. He must catch a five on the river to stay alive. This would be lightning in the bottle if that happened. Well, Harry just trapping him beautifully. It is coming down to the river. Oh! Wow! He did it! Can you believe that? He has hit the two outers. Harry reeled him in perfectly there, Vince. Just unbelievable drama right there. Oh, God. Well, Harry's laughing about it, but that's only on the outside, folks. On the inside... <laughs> His stomach is doing somersaults right now, I can tell you. It's a two hour. Yeah. I'm glad I can afford it. What an outdraw. Hits the five on the river to stay alive. Well done for Stan Weiss. Like we're in fantasy land at Disney World, Vince. Amazing river card there by Stan Weiss to stay alive. In fairness to Stan, he had the best hand on the flop. Got outdrawn on the turn and then hit lightning at the river 
to double up. That's paying my dues for overreacting before when I have the aces. I deserve to get punished, but I've paid my dues now, and now we can get back to going proper poker. Well, that's poker, as they say. Put that on there. And folks, if you don't like a little pain once in a while, poker's probably not your game, because as you can see, you're going to get it. And the first event here in the fifth season of the World Poker Tour is one of the great ones. Stay tuned. We'll come right back in just a moment. From Las Vegas, Nevada, you're watching the Mirage Poker Showdown continue. Well, with that amazing outdraw, Stan Weiss, the amateur at the table, is once again our chip leader. Okay, and the antes and blinds are going up. That's right, it's gambling time at the Mirage. Antes will be 15,000. The blinds are gonna be a whopping 60 and $120,000. Action is gonna be on our man from London, England, Harry Demetrio, with the button. Well, he looks down at a nice hand in a three-handed poker game, a pair of nines. Gives that disgusted look like he doesn't have much of a hand, but we know he's a bit of an actor. Got a very solid pair of nines. And looks like he's going to come in for 400000 not fooling around here. Nice stiff raise, and now Stan goes out with 7-3. And now Devin Porter with king six of clubs. He's already put 120000 in. He and Harry have almost exactly the same amount of chips here. All in. A little over $2.1 million, and he's going all in here. He's trying to make a move and pick up this pot right here. Well, he was thinking Harry was making the move. I can't imagine Harry's going to lay down two nines here, Vince. All right, cool. He's made the call. It's a correct one. Well, look at Devin. He's saying, what was I doing making a move right here? Nice call. Harry Demetrio in great shape here. But believe me, Vince, he's never going to think he's in great shape until it's over, after what happened to him a moment ago. They both have about the same amount of chips. I think Devin just has a few chips more. He won't quite knock out Devin Porter, but Devin won't even have enough to put in a blind. Young man from Salt Lake City on the high wire right now. Here we go. Well, the flop comes Jack 10-8, so the 2-9 still the best hand, and Harry has flopped an open end straight draw as well. Yeah, not a good flop for Devin Porter, the young 22-year-old. Devin looking to catch a king right now. He could also catch two runners to make a straight. Or it could come Jackson Tens, where he'd have the best hand with the king kicker, but... Well, he has stumbled badly right here. Here comes the turn guard. And a queen comes up, and that makes a straight for Harry. This gives Devin a bigger straight draw, however. He could win the pot with an ace or a nine. That's all he can win with. Don't forget, it can't be a diamond either, because Harry has that covered as well. Porter's got to catch an ace or nine. That's not a diamond. That's all he can win with. Otherwise, Harry Demetrio is going to double up. Here we go with the river. Can Devin do it? No, he does not. Well, the five of spade. So Harry Demetrio bouncing back from that devastating beat on the river a moment ago. Takes down a pot that has nearly $4.4 million in it. And Devin just give it away to charity right there. Took a shot, but it backfires. He is down to his last chips. Very close to pulling the white sheet over the body. Just $30,000 in chips. Well, and 15000 of it has to go to the ante Vance, so he's not down to a shoestring, Vance. He's down to dental floss. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, Devin is in the small blind. And he's supposed to put in 60000 but he just has to put in his thirty because that's all in with that. Action's going to be on Stan Weiss here. Now, you'd think he'd call the size of the big blind with any two cards. You try to take the third man out. Oh, Vince, he's laying down ace high. I can't believe this lay down here. Well, that's an amateur mistake right there. It's a horrid mistake in my view. I don't care how this hand comes out. Harry with 10-7 turns up his cards. He's up against Devin's queen deuce. I'm ahead. Well, Stan would have had him dominated with ace deuce here. Yeah. As it turns out, Devin's actually got a better hand. I'm just mesmerized that Stan Weiss would lay down an ace high there in that spot. There's such a big difference in prize money between third place and second place. Over 300000 That you just want to call down and check it down and hope one of you can knock that guy out where you can move up and play heads up for the title and the money. There comes a flop. King 6-4 with two hearts. Devin out in front with his queen high. He's four flushed here, but nothing hitting for Harry. Well, Devin not only has the best hand, he's got the best draw, Vance. Here comes the turn card. Can Devin stick around? It's a jack of clubs. 
Harry's smiling. He knows he's got to catch a 10 or a 7. That's not a heart to win this spot and knock this guy out here. And the point is, if Stan would have called, he'd have been out in front with the ace high. he would taken out Devin, potentially. Here we go with the river. Well, a three comes off, wow. so Devin Porter is going to double up there. Had Stan called there, he would have won that pot. We'd have been down to heads-up play. Very surprised he wouldn't make the call with any two cards there. There's virtually no chance that Harry would continue to bet without a monster hand in that situation. You should know that as a player. Certainly it's worth your while for two guys to try to knock out one for that minimum amount of money. You know, Stan is from Tennessee. Perhaps they play a little different style there. He's going to do it his way. And right now, Devin Porter sticks around. The happy-go-lucky Devin Porter. And as you said, two for two in WPT events in terms of making final tables. But action this time is going to be our guy from London, Harry, with the well, button. He's got nine deuce off suit. Well, Harry certainly understands tournament tactics. He's going to call the third man's all in in the blind. Harry knows that two guys have a better chance of beating him than one. Stand with King Eight. Well, he makes the call also. I check. And Devin, as we know, with Jack yeah, Five, is all in with his measly 60,000. That's going to make a little side pot between Harry and Stan. They could continue to bet on the side and create another pot for themselves. That's unlikely to happen, though. Well, they want to gang up on the young man. And look at this flop. Devin has hit it. Wow. Pair of jacks and a four flush. He's got top pair and a flush draw, the best hand and the best draw. Go oh, Stan and Harry check. Here comes a turn card. Oh, it's a heart bent to seven <laughs> hearts. That is going to do it. Devin Porter is going to triple up here. Oh, man. Devin is coming back like a broke cousin. Well, Stan and Harry could continue to bet. And notice that Stan's made it straight here. It still goes check, check between them. So Stan's going to win the side pot. But Devin Porter is going to triple up here and stay alive again, Vince. Oh, uh, and Harry is going to really give it to Stan. If he did come back and take second place or first place, he'll be saying, hey, you had the ace. You could have eliminated this little insect. This guy's like a fly that's buzzing around the car and you can't get him out. It's annoying. It drives you crazy. Vance, I don't know what you got to do to get somebody out of this game. Stan wouldn't go when he had a two-outer with one to go. And here's Devin down to Berkeley. Not enough chips to play the small blind. And yet he's doubled up and then tripled up back to back. Is it possible he could come back from this short stack? <laughs> he didn't even have two antes left here. Well done for the young man who got in this tournament through a $250 satellite. Action on Stan Weiss here. We could see him the same scenario where Stan limps in. He's got the jack eight of spade. Not a bad hand, but he lays it down, Vince. Well, he's made another mistake there. Well. It's just tactics and strategy he's not familiar with, man. That's all there is to it. Devin's got queen, six of hearts, and he's going to put it all in. 90. Making a $60,000 re-raise. It's going to be another 45000 for Harry to call, and he quickly calls it. Doesn't matter what he has. Turns out he's got a 10-9. His opponent's got the queen, six of hearts. So as the cards lie, Devin Porter about a 3-2 to two favorite to double up yet again. Devin on a nice little rush here. This is it. Can he get lucky again? Well, my old drill sergeant said you can only slide so far in barbed wire. How far can he continue to slide, Vince? You know, I'm beginning to believe he didn't even have a drill sergeant. <laughs> Here we go with the flop. <laughs> All right, there it is. It's come King 9-4. Harry Demetrio has taken the lead here with two nines. How do you like that? He outflopped them. Well, Devin's going to have to get the queen, two running hearts, or two running cards to make it straight. Check of hearts. Otherwise, he's finally going to depart us in third place. And the Salt Lake City crowd just silenced right now. They need some luck, and he's going to get a little luck. He's got a four flush now. Could he possibly make a hard flush back to back to stay alive, Vince? Harry smiling. He's seen beats before dramatically at this final table. This one wouldn't shock him, I'm sure. But he's saying, well, will my hand ever hold up against these guys going to the river? Let's see. Yep, it does. Ten of diamonds comes up. That's going to do it for Devin Porter. Well, he is a phenomenal player. Very bold, creative. This time, just running out of gas. Good luck. And Vince, what can you say about this guy? He's played two World Poker Tour events in his life. He finished fourth and third. That is amazing. Going to make $332,000. He's our third place finisher. We are down to two. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, the Mirage Poker Showdown. About to go into the heads up battle. And Vince, this is class coming out here now. 
Notice the colored outfits the girls have on. They're the same as the logo of the Mirage, the colored palm tree. Well, the stunning Fruit Loop girls from the Mirage dishing out the coin. In addition to the $1.3 million in cash they're going to take home, they get that coveted $25,000 entry into the season-ending WPT World Championship. And our beautiful Sabina Gadecki bringing out the WPT chip case. Winning, Vince. That's what it's all about. You'll be recognized forever as a WPT champion everywhere you go when you went out here on the tour. Well, Harry Demetrio from London, the poker professional, wants to take this title up against the amateur player, Stan Weiss, the ticket broker. Now, Vince, we could have another champion from England capture a WPT title, or we could have an amateur from Nashville, Tennessee, who got into this tournament by winning a $60 satellite, prove to the world that anybody can do it. Let's go down to the green felt. Harry this time with eight five of spades with the button. He calls this. Well, he limps in and makes the call. Uh, Stan Weiss with queen eight has an option to raise, but he elects not to. So we're going to have our first flop. Now flop is king, jack, three. No help for either player. Action's on Stan. Nothing materializing for him, but he's going to check it. And look how quick the hand goes to the chips for Harry. Well, Harry, with absolutely nothing here, going to bluff at this pot. Bets 225000 Show a little weakness to the English pro. And Stan's going to lay it down, it looks like. Yeah. Yes. So aggressive play after the flop. Taken place by Harry Demetrio there. So a little momentum for Harry Demetrio. To try to push his man Stan around. Well, believe me, when you're playing heads up for a title such as this, you don't take anything for granted. You're not going to be happy until you've got every chip in front of you, and it's over. Well, Things turn around quickly in heads up, no limit holder matches. Well, this time the button belongs to Stan the Man Weiss. Action's on him. He's got Queen I 10 raise. this time. He says he's going to raise. And he puts out the 120. 400. He's going to raise it 400,000 more. Makes it 520 to go. Nice pop into Harry, but Harry's got big slick, big hand, ace king. Well, you gotta love this. You know he's gonna play this hand, Vince. It's just a matter of how you play it. I'm all in. Over the top all in, he says. Every time he's done that so far, his opponents called him quickly. Stan not calling so quick this time. Over the top, all in, in your face. And he goes away. Well, it was over three million more to stand. That time he opts to lay it down. Disappears, dissolves like a bar of soap. Good lay down there. Well, remember last time Harry had two aces and that spot went all in. And Stan beat him in the pot with a king five. So Harry hoping to get action quickly there. Didn't happen that time. Well, with that pot, the Englishman Harry Demetrio climbs over the five million dollar chip mark. He's looking to join former champions of this event. Eli Elezra and Gavin Smith as title holders of the Mirage Poker Showdown. And he has about twice as much as his opponent. Action right back on Harry Demetrio. With the button, peeks down to the King Ten of Spades. 400. Well, he knows that hand is a favorite over two random cards, so he's going to raise it here. He comes in for 400,000. And now Stan Weiss looks down at a Queen Ten. Well, same hand he had a moment ago. I raise. Uh -oh. Wow, Vince, he is going to re-raise with a queen-10. This time, he's going to play it bully style. Well, he thinks Harry's playing games, perhaps. And with just queen-10, wow. Well, he's raised at $845,000. Now, because of the WPT hole cam brought to you <clears> by Budweiser, <throat> we can see that Harry Demetrio has a dominating hand over his opponent. Can you take 400 in, please? But believe me, when you're sitting down there at the table, you don't know it. Your opponent re-raised you 845,000 and you've got King 10. What do you do? A former scientist out of London. How much is that? Calculating. He knows a lot of things here, Vince. He knows there's over $1.6 million in the pot right now. Going to cost him 845,000 to call. But more importantly, he knows if he wins this pot and gets all his opponent's chips, he's going to be our champion. Does he want to gamble here and put in another 845 or go over the top and just set him all in right now? He looks over at Stan. 
And look at Stan Weiss. You know, you got to admire this man's poker face. I mean, the cigar store Indian. Wow. Like a totem pole. Well, he is making a move here. With a queen-10 offsuit, his opponent is holding a king-10. Well, how about this crowd? Can't hear a peep out of them. Cool. And he's going to make the call, Vance. What a nice, smooth call. So over two and a half million dollars in the pot right now. Stan Weiss only has about 1.4 million left. Well, it is a massive pot. It's all right. We got King 10 up against Queen 10. Well, here comes the flop. Well, Harry Demetrio holding his breath, saying, please just give me one flop where I can end this thing. Well, it's come Jack Six Deuce. That's no help to either player. No, it's not. Action's on Stan. I'm all in. Wow, he's going all in, Vince. He's just bluffing this whole pot from top to bottom. He is making a huge bet with absolutely nothing. Now, is this enough money to get the man out who has a better hand? Now, the question is, Harry, are you pot committed or not? Well, he might be, Vince. There's over 3.9 million out there now. Yeah. It's going to cost him 1.4 million to make the call. Isn't Still it? very difficult to do with King High. Makes his call, Mike. This could be over. He could well, become our champion. He is out in front of this point. Well, Vince, if he lays this down, he's going to fault himself for not moving all in before the flop on this hand. What boldness by the amateur player, Stan Weiss, well, this to make this kind of bet with nothing. Stan Weiss remaining very stoic here. He is not flinching. My fault. Boy, he's going to lay it down, though. Well, Vince, we've been talking about Stan Weiss as an amateur player, seeing he make some mistakes at this final table. But I can tell you right now, he played that hand as well as any top pro in the world could have played it. Now, we're going to have to take a look at the wonder cam. I have to peek. Let's see what would have happened. Oh, wow, look at this. A king on the turn. Wow. And a jack on the river. That would have done it. Harry Demetrio would have been our champion had he played that pot. No doubt about it, Vince. But take your hat off to the amateur Stan Weiss. Brilliant move, pushing it all in. He takes that pot. We got two players playing with absolute reckless abandon here at the Mirage. Stay tuned, we're coming back with more. Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown, the first event of the fifth season on the World Poker Tour. And what a battle we have right now. Well, Vince, we just saw the amateur from Nashville, Tennessee, make a tremendous play to win that last pot. He bluffed it. He won it. He's now the chip leader once again. The ticket broker from Nashville making it happen. And the antis are up to 20,000. Blinds are going to be 100 and 200. Let's go back down to the table. Wow. Played that hand like Gus Hansen, Vince, who says when he plays heads up, he likes to be first to act, not on the button, because he's the first one that can bluff at the pot. But right now, action's on Harry. He's got Jack-8 offsuit, and he makes a call. Limps in on the button with the Jack-8, trying to see a flop here. And now the ticket broker has a 7-3 offsuit. Stan says, give us a flop. Nothing fancy. And here comes a flop. Well, it's come ace-7-deuce. Stan has picked up a little piece of it, the pair of sevens. It's going to be on him to act first. And chances are he's never going to believe that Harry has an ace in his hand because he limped in on the button. I'm all in. And he's going all in here, Vince. Well, that shows you he doesn't believe he's got an ace, and rightfully so. Good evaluation right there. Makes the bet, and Harry has to lay it down. Well, just slams the door on Harry right there. Doesn't give him a chance to out-catch him, out-draw him, out-do anything to him. Oh. Just shuts him out. So Stan Weiss in command once again. Is it possible that this amateur from Tennessee can capture this WPT title and take home $1.3 million? He got in this tournament by winning a $60 satellite, has well over a two-to-one advantage in chip count over his opponent. The dream parlay, nearly complete, Vince. Well, he is playing exceptionally tonight. Action's going to be on him. Well, he looks down at the King 5. Million total. And he makes it $1 million here, Vince. That's a big raise. A bet that's essentially going to pot commit Harry Demetrio if he opts to play the King Six. Well, Harry's only got 2.2 .2 million in total in chips. So if he calls a million, you'd think he'd just sail in the rest of it. Now, he knows blinds and annies are high and you have to gamble at some point. 
Could you make this call or re-raise here with just a king six? I'm all in. Wow, he does wow. go top call. all in. He is doing it. And a quick call, of course, by Stan Weiss. Well, certainly Stan's going to call. So Harry Demetrio out front right now. This would flip-flop the leader, of course. A great opportunity for Harry. If four big cards comes up, this pot will be split. But right now, neither player thinking about a split. Stan thinking about catching a five and winning this pot and taking this title. Harry Demetrio thinking about his hand holding up and doubling up here. Well, he'd love to hit his six, of course. So we will see. Take it two fives. Let's see the flop, please. Harry Demetrio must win this pot to stay alive. Here we go with the first three. Well, the flop comes jack, nine, seven. As the cards lie, Harry Demetrio has the best hand. But if any card comes up over a seven, this is going to be a split pot, well, unless there are two running spades. But if not, Harry in a good place right now, so anything can happen. Here comes the turn card. It's a three. Hey, the three of spades, though, Vance. Stan Weiss now has a flush draw. A spade will do. Stan needs a spade or a five to win the pot. Harry needs a deuce, four, or a six. It's not a spade. If any card comes up over a seven that's not a spade, it will be a split pot. It's anyone's pot. It's anyone's title going down the river. What's it going to be? Oh, it's a five. Vince, that's going to do it. Stan Weiss, the amateur, has done it. He's knocked out these pros and captured his title. Oh, man. He spiked the five. It's a million-dollar card. He is going to be our champion. It was just supposed to be for Stan Weiss. It is his night. He's going to take home $1.3 million. The magical five, Vince. That's what he caught to stay alive with a two-outer against this same opponent. Now he's caught a five on the river to win it. I think five is going to be his lucky number. Talk to our runner-up from London, England, Harry Demetrio. Harry? <laughs> Harry, certainly, you're going to be having nightmares about fives for a long time to come, I think. But what a show you put on here. You know, you finished second. I know you're probably a little disappointed that you didn't win the title, but we can only have one champion. How do you feel about your performance? How can I be disappointed? I came into this final table fifth position. I gave myself a real shot of winning and I'm going to sleep well tonight regardless. <laughs> well, Harry, you're certainly a credit to the poker industry. Congratulations on your runner-up performance tonight. Thank you very much. And now let's talk to our champion from Nashville, Tennessee, Stan Weiss. Come over here, Stan. Congratulations on your championship. Thanks a lot, Mike. And, uh, you know, Harry was a, a real class person. It was a match could have went either way. And uh, I'm happy to win. Well, we're certain that you are. And now as a custom on the World Poker Tour, we're going to toast our champion with Budweiser, the official beer of the World Poker Tour. And here's to the champion of the Mirage Poker Showdown, Stan Weiss from Nashville, Tennessee. For Vince Van Patten, Sabina Gadecki, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for watching. And until next time, May all your cards be live and your pots be monsters. I don't understand what this is for here. <laughs>